now I present to you our, our director, Brother Jay Corey.
Don't make me. Keep it moving. Get in here. What is this place? This is the well room. It's where people used to get their water from. You ever hear the phrase, don't drink the water here? I've heard that. This here well is the here you heard about. We hear you. <laughs> and whoever wrote this script should have hired a writer. Just don't be going anywhere while I'm gone, got it? Fat chance. Why would we want to leave all this luxury? Hey, you tore my sleeve. <clears throat> if I was 10 years younger, I'd... James! You would what? I'd finish what you started. If you were 20 years younger, I might welcome the opportunity. James, remember why we are here. Am I not a Jew? What right does the high priest have to go whining to Herod to have us thrown in prison for teaching the truth? Are we men? I tell you, John, this perversion of justice defies our laws. James! Your laws? The only law down here is my law. And if you don't straighten up, I'm going to put both of you in stocks. We are not common criminals. James, hold your tongue. <laughs> Don't you understand? This is part of God's plan. It's what we're supposed to expect from the enemies of Christ. It's something to rejoice about. Rejoice? Have you lost your head? He hasn't, but you might if you keep this up. So what are you going to do? Call down fire from heaven? As I recall, Elijah was the only one who had much success in that business. And you are no Elijah. Try prayer. It's the favorite last resort. If surely God's plan is better than ours. Wait, wait. No, no, no. No prayer. I heard the centurion story about that guy that just disappeared. Poof, gone. There was a whole squad that lost their heads. Just don't be praying your way out of here, got it? Please. Or I'll put you down there in the wet room under this one. That's what this big key is for. But that monster they call the high priest, God will rebuke him. Give him a chance. But... James, no fire. If a miracle is needed, God will do it. That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. These things I write unto you, that your joy may be full. Ugh. I like that, John. That our joy may be full. Oh. I thought you were asleep. So I see you changed your tune a little. I tried what you suggested. Nothing else worked, so I... I prayed about it. I prayed that God would work his miracle. So, what are you writing? It's a letter to the churches. I might as well spend my time wisely here if I'm going to be stuck in the cell a while. What I'm really trying to do is show them Jesus. Who he really is. We beheld his glory. But now a whole generation of young people will be coming along. Even the Gentile converts who never saw the Lord. Before the Romans or the Jews execute us, we've got to pass along to another generation what Jesus did. 
I doubt we'll be in this pigsty long enough for you to write everything he said and did. Well, no. Not at all. But at least the best parts. Remember the wedding party in Cana and the water turned to wine? What about that wild man? What about Peter walking on the water in that ferocious storm? <laughs> and there were thousands that ate from five biscuits and two scrawny fish. Wee little ones. <laughs> oh, no. Here's the greatest miracle. Lazarus stumbling out of, the out of the grave with his grave clothes still wrapped around him. <laughs> oh, but nothing can surpass my mind. Seeing Jesus himself after the resurrection to touch the scars in his hands and side. You see, that's it. We saw and heard and touched him, God's Messiah. We were there, James. It's up to us to tell. Christ Jesus is Messiah, how I know that what he promised he can do. You may wonder if the Bible can be trusted, if the things it said Christ did are really true. short. Be back in a few minutes. Welcome. Can, uh, can we help you? Help you? We're in jail, brother. We're the ones that need helping. 
oh yeah, can you help us? Well, I doubted they would let me in today, but when I heard you were here, I had to try. This place has bad food and water. They thought I was your sister. It's a miracle they let me in. We're used to miracles. It's manna from heaven, huh? I brought bread and goat cheese Ooh. and leeks and garlic. Ah. <clears throat> and the water is fresh from the well. The well. That's it. The well. I know who you are. Well, we should share the news. I can place the face, but don't you see the well? Oh, I remember now. Here. Sit here. This is the second time in our lives you've surprised us. I remember we were shocked the first time we saw you. Was I so horrible to look at? Oh, oh no, no, no. It's just that, well, you know, a Jewish rabbi being seen talking to a Samaritan woman, it just never happened that way before. And you look so different now. Your hair... Your clothes, just everything is completely changed. Your master changed me completely. From the inside first, I will never forget that day. I was hot and irritable, and this Jew asked me for a drink. Well, you know we have no dealings with the Jews, but your master, our master, was unlike any man I had ever met before or since. He spoke of living water. I thought he meant, you know, running water. <laughs> but now I understand what he meant. Water gives life. We can't live without it. He gave me life that will go on and on. Oh, I've forgotten why I came. Here, drink. I came because Jesus gave me life once. It's the least I can do for his servants. Thank you. <clears throat> I drink it in memory of him. Hey, save some for me. I hope you don't mind drinking after your brother. Oh, under normal circumstances I would. But I'm dying of thirst to the Savior, the water of life. Whoa, this does come out of here a little fast, doesn't it? I want to Thirsting for a drink from some cool spring, I cried in deep despair, but no one heard my prayer till Jesus came and made my heart to see. Thank you. 
one of you is John? That would be him, the ugly one. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't know Jews had a sense of humor. Well, John, you are relieved. But why not both of us? Why me? I don't know. Do I look like Herod to you? He said that the loudmouth one was to stay. The boys in the guardhouse are betting that he has, you know, plans for him. Then we both stay. You tell that old fox we go to death together. As far as I care, you can all lose your heads. But I have my orders. The one called John leaves. I'll give you a few minutes to say your farewells. It's the miracle. The one I prayed for when we first came here. I can't leave you here. It isn't fair. Oh, how I'd like to get my hands on that wicked serpent Herod. I would just... John, he's a dirty little coward to cave into the Jews? Enough to keep you here? Without just cause? Now, who wants to call down fire? Listen to me. It's the miracle we prayed for when we came here. God is truly at work. That's what counts. We both knew this could be our last home on earth, and we accepted that from God's hand. Can we reject it now because he chooses to save one of us? Go. Take the life you have and make it count. God will walk with me in the valley of the shadows, or perhaps I'll go free soon too. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yes, my brother. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ.
Yes. Uh, hello, you old scoundrel. I brought along an old fishing buddy. <laughs> James, you look pale. It's time we get out on the lake in the bright sunshine and put down some nets, brother. <laughs> Peter, I know better than that. You don't come home smelling of fish these days. Uh, well, how are you, brother? I mean, we've heard that uh, Herod and the high priest have come up with some false witnesses. Liars come cheap on the streets of Jerusalem. Only God can save me now from Satan's emissaries. But let's not waste our precious time speaking of my troubles. How's the church? Give me the news. Persecution grows worse every day. But in spite of it, the church is thriving. Praise the Savior. John and I were talking uh, as we walked to the jail today about the times we shared with the Lord. I was telling Cephas about the book I am writing for the churches. <laughs> Does he bore you with his book too? <laughs> uh, but seriously though, John, how far have you gotten in the story of Jesus now? Well... I just so happen to have a page with me. Really? What a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure you two haven't forgotten this. And when even was now come, his disciples went down into the sea and entered into a ship and went over toward Capernaum. And it was dark, and Jesus was not come to them. I'm sure Peter remembers it. I mean, he had spent his whole life on the water, but not without a boat. <laughs> I was so scared that night. I thought he was a ghost. <laughs> and I don't even believe in ghosts. <laughs> it seems foolish now, but who had ever seen someone walking on the water? And it was one of the worst storms we'd ever seen. Remember? And then Peter steps out of the boat. Who else but Peter? You had your chance. You could have joined me. And how long did you walk on the water? Five seconds. <laughs> I would call that five seconds longer than you've ever done it. <laughs> Listen, there's two people that's walked on the water, and you're looking at one of them. <laughs>
Peter is a champion of walking on the sea. Trusting in the Son of God, he conquered gravity. Jesus, the Creator, there's nothing that he can do. He can perform great miracles, what's too hard for me and you? After getting let down through the roof and Jesus heals him, he just picks up his bed and elbows his way out of the crowd. <laughs> oh, but that old Pharisee up front got touched with the bedding. And he started crawling across the floor like he'd been stung by a hundred bees trying to get out the back door. <laughs> and when the Lord told Peter to go fishing and get the coin for the tax money, the quizzical look on your face was a sight to behold. He said to take the fish on the first hook, and there would be a coin in his mouth. And there was. <laughs> there was. What did you do with the fish? Uh, I put it back in the water. <laughs> Peter put the fish back in the water. <laughs> he put the fish back in the water. <laughs> I'm hurting. Stop it. <laughs> I hurt. Oh, I haven't had a good laugh like this since the last time we came back to Jerusalem. The last time. The supper. The garden. The heavy times. But then he arose. The joy. I did a song. Brace yourself. <laughs> Go for it. Well, thank you. Born of his spirit, a new child of God. My father fed me on the milk of his word. In childlike faith, I trusted his wisdom. My savior, my father, my sweet joy, my Lord. And as I grew, I found new understanding. The words of the Lord meant more than before. I found in his freedom that sin could not bind me. I learned to use his word as a sword. Oh, what sweet glory the Lord was preparing. A match on to dwell in a robe of pure white. His loving hand led me steadily onward toward the goal of the righteous, the city of light. And now, as I go to my sweet rest and glory, and my work for Jesus on earth is about done, I see how God's Spirit has led me and guided me, and how God has brought me from a cradle to a crown. Thank you, brother. Now, as I go to my sweet resting. Stand up, prisoner. carefully. His Excellency, Herod Agrippa, King of Judea and representative of the Emperor, does hereby sentence James, son of Zebedee of Galilee, to die by the sword this day for crimes of sedition against the Empire. Prepare to meet your God, prisoner. Visitors must leave within the hour. 
I am sorry. Thank you, Gaius. I'll pray for you. For me, sir? Th th thank you, sir. I, I am truly sorry. So, you go to be with a master. I envy you. I hope that isn't a sin. <laughs> I have never feared death. Not since the first day I saw Jesus in his new body. Death has lost its sting. John, what were those words you wrote to me the last time you were here? I've kept a copy. Can you read them again, please? And this is the record that God had given unto us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things I have written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. That's it. Eternal life. That's what we have. You do not go to die by the sword, my brother. You only pass from this life to the next one. Our Lord overcame the grave that morning long ago. And when John and I had that foot race to the tomb, we found no death, only life. Uh, pardon me, sir. Guys, yes, yes. I, I couldn't help overhearing, sir. You're really not afraid of dying, are you? Uh, oh, no, good fellow. I'm going to see the master. He's alive and he's waiting for me. I, I've got to know how... Out with it, man. Say it. How... How can I... Yes, yes. How can I have eternal life? How, how, how can I be, believe on the name of, of the Son of God? Glory! <laughs> Guys, you've come a long way. Now this is really the easy part. You believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Oh, yes, sir, I, I know that now. And that you're a sinner? Oh, for sure. God knows that, too. Do you believe that Jesus died and rose from the dead just like he said? Yes, sir, I, I do. Y you've said so yourself. Then all you have to do is call on him to save you. C call on him? What... What do I say? Well, first, confess you're a sinner and ask forgiveness for your sin. Then confess Jesus is the Son of God. He died for you on the cross and rose again. Then just ask him to come into your heart and save you. Dear Heavenly Father, I bring Gaius before you. He wants to accept the Lord Jesus as his Savior. May he understand fully all that Christ has done for him on the cross of Calvary. I ask the Holy Spirit to touch his heart, even as he has touched ours. Thank you, Father. Now, just pray after me, guys. Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. I confess that I'm a sinner. I, I confess that I am a sinner. And I ask forgiveness for my sin. I, I ask forgiveness for my sin. I believe that you are the Son of God. I do believe that, that you are the Son of God. And that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. And, and that, that you died for me on the cross of Calvary. I believe that you rose again from the dead. I, I believe that you rose again from the dead. And are now alive in heaven. Are now alive in heaven. God... Have mercy upon a wicked man. I, I ask you to come into my life. 
save me and be the Lord of my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for eternal life and, and for saving me. Amen. Gosh, you've done it. Heavenly Father, thank you for this new convert. May his life be a testimony to his family and all those around him, Father. And it's in his blessed name that we thank you. In the Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, thank you. Thank you. You are a Christian now, Gaius. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He, he did come into my life. I, I can tell. The Holy Spirit will be your constant companion, and he will form Jesus Christ in you, Gaius. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. I think we have company upstairs. Oh, no. Oh, we must go now. Come with me quickly. You'll finish your book, yes? Tell them that Jesus is alive. I will tell them. Fell royal, Peter. I'll greet the master for you. Tell him that I still love him. Uh, yes, Peter, I will. But you two will join me there soon, and we'll sit at the master's feet yes. together. Yes. When we were thrown in here all those months ago, we prayed for a miracle, remember? You said God answered that prayer when I was released. But soon, another miracle will occur that is far greater. The miracle of passing from death unto life. I'm going to miss you, my brother. I wish I could go with you, because the master will be there. Our master of miracles. church. We've had the privilege tonight of witnessing, albeit in story form, the salvation of one of God's own. We've seen Gaius, the Roman jailer, trust Jesus Christ as his Savior. Obviously, a lot of what was put into tonight's presentation was fictitious, the story itself perhaps, but obviously the major events that took place, the miracles of which Peter and James and John talked there in the Roman dungeon, we're very, very real. We believe that Jesus lived. We believe that Jesus walked this earth and that he did many miracles to prove to the world at that time that he is, in fact, the living Son of God. We also understand that at the end of that life, Jesus Christ was delivered by sinful men. 
into the hands of the Gentiles, as the scripture says, to be crucified, not for his own crimes, but for ours, for yours and for mine. When Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, he did it in a way that we call vicariously. That is, he suffered in our place. He paid the debt that we owed. He died literally for our sins. The Bible says that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. And now he ever lives in heaven to make intercession for those that will call upon him. The reason we do things like this is so that every one of you, our friends and neighbors, will have the opportunity to know Jesus Christ as your Savior. I don't know what your spiritual condition is tonight. I'd love to see several of you trust Christ before you leave this place. Perhaps everyone here is saved. I don't know. But in the moment, the choir is going to begin to sing a song. And as they sing, this is what we call our invitation time. This is the time that you can actually respond to what the Lord has shown us dramatically tonight in the dramatic presentation. We'd like to invite you to trust Jesus as your Savior. If you don't know for 100% sure that when you die, you're going to spend eternity in heaven with Christ, then we want to invite you as our choir begins to sing in just a moment to step out of your place and come. Take my hand and say, Pastor, I'd like for someone to show me how I can be born again. We've got people that are said trained, will take you aside and show you in the Bible how you can know for certain that your sins are forgiven. That's the choir saying.